I love the butterfly effect. Anybody knows about the chaos theory? The chaos theory says something small can eventually lead to something big. And this is so true for cybersecurity. The only thing that a criminal needs is your password. One password, one click on a phishing email, and you're done. Your organization is breached. It's that simple. Hackers don't need to break fancy firewalls. If you go and spend a thousand bucks on a firewall at incredible connection, they probably won't hack it. The technology is that good. So what do they do? They follow the path of least resistance, which is the human. Humans can be bored. Can we monitor humans? No, I can't plug a, plug a chip in your head and say, okay, now I know what to do. You can't. So today, where we stand with AI and with everything, we don't have a way to monitor what humans are doing. And if anybody comes to you and tells you, we can monitor your human's behavior, show them the door, because you can't. You cannot monitor human behavior with technology. It's simply impossible. You can monitor their behavior on their computer, but you cannot monitor their behavior. And I'll prove my point just now. So some examples of where this is very, very true. I don't know if you guys know about Stuxnet. Stuxnet was a virus that was developed between the, the, the US and Israeli military forces. And the sole purpose of this virus was to attack the Iranian nuclear centrifuges. So centrifuges is what cools the reactor. And the only thing that this virus did, it let the centrifuge blade spin uncontrollably until they destroy itself without causing alarm. So the reactor and its control systems are completely isolated. And you can only access it via a central terminal inside the reactor building. So they engineered this virus to be transferred via memory stick to memory stick and through social engineering, placing it in the right person's desk or whatever, so that when that stick is plugged in on that specific computer, the payload executes. So one virus, one memory stick placed in the right place, the Iranian program was almost brought to its knees. This was the Ukrainian, I don't know if you want to try and pronounce that, I'm not going to try, but basically they brought down 80,000 consumers with an Excel spreadsheet. There was a malicious, a malicious macro in the spreadsheet. Somebody opened it, the macro ran. The attackers had access to the network. They killed the power system. Okay. One Excel file. So think of the butterfly effect. One small file, power system down. One cry, I'm sure you remember a few years back, or when ransomware started. So ransomware is based on Eternal Blue. Eternal Blue was developed by the NSA, the US NSA, and it was a tool developed to spy on people. So hackers um, got a hold of this, and they basically modified this to, to, to suit them. Eternal Blue is very good at spreading. Uh, it's called, called the worm. So it's very good at spreading, and that's why WannaCry was so effective. Um, you can see 230,000 plus computers in one day across 150 countries. It's quite immense. So how do we move forward? We have to understand how a hacker thinks. So the police says to catch a crook, you have to think like a crook. And the same applies to, to cyber. If you don't understand how a criminal's mind works, how are you going to protect? If you don't know how they're going to come into your system, into your private life, how are you going to protect yourself? There's a framework that we call a cyber kill chain. So this basically is a framework that guides you to to try and map processes. So it starts from where they do reconnaissance. So reconnaissance is they use Facebook, LinkedIn, websites, all that kind of stuff to build information about an organization. So remember, if they want your money, they want information, what do they need? They need a password. But whose password? Not everybody's passwords work for the bank. It works for um, all the IT systems. So they will scourge the internet until they find the right account that will give them access to that information and access to the bank. So once they have that, they can customize the payloads and they can deliver it via email or via website or whatever until they can detonate, they can get access to your system and then it's game over. So why this is important, um, if you understand how the attack takes place, you can plan how to defend. So my approach to security is through offensive, um, offensive techniques. So I first think what can go wrong, what can I do, and then I apply security controls on top of that, okay? You can't do it the other way. If you don't know what to, what to protect, what are you protecting? And the service providers will come and say, put this technology in, we'll make sure you are protected. It doesn't exist. If you don't know your environment, 
How can you tell other people how to protect you? So you have to know, you have to understand how the hacker's brain works, how the techniques work, then only can you protect. So this is an exercise that we did last year. Um, I said earlier I'm very controversial. I use my hackers a lot, and really a lot. I love my hackers. And I use them to, to really show me where the real gaps in the organization is. Not in technology, in the organization. I don't test technology. I'm past that. Technology, we know. There's a tool you run, it tells you these are the flaws. Bam, you know what the problem is. I use my hackers to tell me where's the problem with the business. I use them to test people, to test processes. In this, in this scenario, um, I said to them, find a file and try to extort somebody. Try to social engineer. Find the right people and see how you can get the information. So they use LinkedIn, only LinkedIn, and the website, our own website, they could see who's the people who work there. Through LinkedIn, they identified me. They even identified our SOC, our SOC team, our IT administrators, so then they knew who to target. Okay, so it goes back to that um, kill chain framework, so it goes back to reconnaissance. Now they know to target. Okay, so they compromise the workstation. It's effort to attack a server. A server has got so many controls. Your PC doesn't have the same amount of controls. So it's easier to attack a PC, that laptop that you're working on, to get to, the, to, the, to your end goal. Why is it easier? Because the user that logs in on that laptop is authorized to get to the network, to get to your servers. So if you compromise the, the laptop, you've got full access to the network. 